exactly what we did. A total of 121 public consultations, including the one in Dubai, 53 closed-door expert consultations, for a total of 174 consultations. And ultimately, we took all these inputs, we sat with them and worked with them for many days, and together, as a committee, we arrived at the manifesto, which our Congress President is going to launch shortly. Sir, I am happy to mention to you that we took our mission very seriously, and we have delivered your vision that the manifesto should reflect the voices of the people is exactly what has transpired. The manifesto reflects the voices, the aspirations, the concerns, the suggestions, the ideas, the hopes of the people of India. We look forward to taking this manifesto to the people and to using this as a blueprint for governance in the months ahead. Thank you very much. Jai Hind. Shukriya Rajiv ji. Aaj is mauke par Congress party ke sabhi sammanit mahasachiv gan, Congress kare samiti ke sammanit sadasse gan, Mukhya Mantri gan, party ke Congress party ke Pradesh Congress committee ke adhyaksh gan, Vidhayak dal ke neta, Akhil Bhartiya Congress committee ke sabhi padadikari, jo aaj is etihasik samay par अपना साथ जोड़ने हाथ जोड़ने आए हैं जनता की इस आवाज में हम उन सब का भी स्वागत करते हैं और अब मैं अनुरोध करूंगा उस शख्सियत को श्री पी चिदम्बरम पूर्व वित्त मंत्री जो मैनिफेस्टो कमेटी के चेयरमैन भी हैं कि वो आएंगे और इस जन आवाज घोषणा पत्र के बारे में संक्षिप्त में अपनी बात कहेंगे आदरणीय चिदम्बरम साहब Respected Congress President Sri Rahul Ji, respected former Congress President Srimati Sonia Gandhi Ji, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh Ji, Sri Anthony Ji, Sri Venugopal Ji, Sri Randeep Surjewala Ji, my colleague Professor Rajiv Gowda. My colleagues in the party, friends, friends from the media. The manifesto will be released in a few minutes and you will have a copy in your hands. The manifesto was made through a process which has been described by my colleague Sri Rajiv Gowda. The content the contents of the manifesto, in my view, are the millions of voices that we heard during these consultations. If there is a paragraph in the manifesto, that paragraph was actually spoken or written by a citizen or a group of citizens in this country. They spoke much more they wrote to us much more, but we could not accommodate all those voices, all those writings, given the limitations of the size of the manifesto. When this manifesto is released and when the contents are known, you will find that there is enough in the manifesto which addresses the concerns of our farmers, youth, women, Dalits, minorities, industry, small and medium enterprises, those who are concerned with the state of our education, those who are concerned with the state of our health care, workers, workers in the unorganized sector, concerns about internal security, concerns about national security, foreign policy, 
the northeastern states, Jammu and Kashmir. There is so much, so much more could have been said, but I'm sorry, given the limitations of the manifesto, we could only say so much. But I'm sure when our party workers and our party leaders take the message forward across the length and breadth of this country, they will find resonance to what we have said. The idea is to set the narrative for 2019. I think the Congress President has already set the narrative. The BJP, which is our opposition, they may be the ruling party today, they may call us the opposition, but the BJP is our opposition. That party is trying to seize the narrative. That party is trying to take the narrative back to the old, what they tried five years ago, the narrative of polarization, divisiveness, and hyper-nationalism. We have to bring the narrative to the real issues faced by the people. And the real issues are, as every survey, every research will tell us, the real issues are, number one is unemployment. 4 crore 70 lakh jobs were lost, not the 2 crore jobs every year that the Prime Minister promised. 4 crore 70 jobs, jobs were lost. The second issue is farmers' distress. Farmers' loan burden has increased year after year after year. And according to an Abad report, the average Indian farmer has a loan burden of a lakh and 4,000 rupees, one lakh four thousand rupees. The third is women. And when we ask women in Mumbai, what is your prime concern? I thought they will say price rise. But what they said was our security. Women are afraid of their security, of their children's security, of the security of their homes. These are the top three issues. Unemployment, farmers' distress, and women's security. There are many other issues. These thread that binds all the sections of the manifesto is simply in two words, wealth and welfare. The manifesto, when implemented by a Congress government, I assure you, we will create wealth and we will guarantee welfare. The theme of the manifesto is how do you merge or how do you marry wealth and welfare? The goal of the manifesto is to announce a plan to the people of India where we will create wealth and we will guarantee welfare. And that I'm sure a Congress government under Sri Rahul Gandhi will do. Thank you. Bahad Bahad Shukriya. आदरणीय चिदंबरम जी और अब मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहूंगा जिन पर हम सबको गर्व है जिन्होंने राहुल जी और श्रीमती सोनिया गांधी जी के साथ और इस देश का 10 वर्ष तक नेतृत्व करते हुए देश में गरीबी पर प्रहार किया और देश की व्यवस्था को बदला आदरणीय डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह जी Respected Congress President Shri Rahul Gandhi ji, former President AICC Shri Mati Sonia Gandhi ji, Chidambaram ji, Anthony ji, Venugopal ji, members of the Working Committee and all the other distinguished persons present here. Today is a unique day in the history of the Congress party. We are going to release a forward-looking document which sums up the aspiration of the people of India for a decent life and life of dignity and self-respect. 
as Sri Chidambaram has just now mentioned, this document has been prepared after consultations with large number of people from various walks of life. I am sure that it will be debated all over the country so that the aspirations of the people of India, the vision of the Congress party and its Congress president can be a subject matter of widespread debate and understanding in various parts of our country. The purpose of the manifesto is to spell out the vision of the Congress party to move forward at a faster speed than ever before to move towards an inclusive, forward-looking economy and polity. We all would like India to be a prosperous country, a country where prosperity and productivity go together. And for that matter, the manifesto points its perspective with regard to what will happen to the country's economy and it will be a strong, purposeful, modern market economy with savings rate target being fixed at 40% of our GDP, investment rate being fixed at 35% of GDP so that there should be all round understanding that meaningful problems of poverty, ignorance and disease that still afflict millions of our people can be solved only in the framework of a rapidly expanding economy. And this manifesto spells out that vision of a rapidly expanding economy. It also spells out what we would plan to do, how to get rid of chronic poverty ignorance and disease, we still afflict millions and millions of our people. We have made in the 10 years of the UPA a very impressive progress. 140 million people were brought out of the poverty line. We must better that record and we must make sure that in the year 2030 we would have got rid of poverty from this land of ours. Therefore, the program that is mentioned, outlined in this manifesto is worthy of all-round dialogue, discussion, the young people, the backward classes, the deprived classes, Dalits and minorities, all sections of society have been taken care of but it is the duty of the Congress workers to carry the message of the manifesto to the people at large and that's the purpose of releasing this manifesto today so that we go ahead telling people what has been missing in the last five years of the BJP rule, how unemployment has increased, how farmers' distress has increased, how foreign policy is in a mess and how we can, working together, move forward in a new direction which spells out the vision of the Congress party. I therefore commend this document to all our sections of the community, all sections of our country, so that their aspiration, their vision can get a mechanism to, re, to a mechanism to bring together all sections of our society on a new platform of inclusive growth which will get rid of poverty in a definite period of time. Thank you very much. बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह जी आपके आशीर्वचन और इस जन घोषणा पत्र पर आपके विचारों से 
और अब जिस बात का इंतजार था मैं अनुरोध करूंगा कांग्रेस अध्यक्ष श्री राहुल गांधी जी श्रीमती सोनिया गांधी जी डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह जी और मंच पर उपस्थित सभी नेतागणों से कि वो 2019 का ऐतिहासिक जन घोषणा पत्र उसका अनावरण करें